and a fine Tuesday morning to you. Uh, it's about seven o'clock and we've had breakfast and uh, done the dishes and uh, raised the anchor and we are slowly making our way out of Orient Harbor. Uh, weather forecast this morning is for uh, five knot winds from the southwest uh, swinging to the south perhaps in the afternoon so we'll have to see where that takes us uh, <laughs> probably not very far but hopefully we can do a little bit uh, better than we did yesterday So it's now about nine o'clock and we've managed to make our way to near the entrance, or I guess in our case, the exit <laughs> to uh, Orient Harbor. Uh, a distance in a straight line of a little less than a mile. Um, we didn't really go in a straight line, uh, but you know, that's the, that's the progress we've made in two hours. And currently we're just drifting, fortunately, in an appropriate direction, <laughs> out. Uh, and uh, actually the, the current is going to be in the direction that we want to go, and that's all we may have as a means of propulsion. Uh, you know, there has been, there have been periods with a little bit of wind. Uh, made two knots briefly at one point, but it's mostly been like this. Another exciting day of sailing. It's now 11 o'clock, uh, and we are once again uh, uh, completely becalmed. Uh, GPS is telling me we are making a, a half knot due to current in the direction uh, that we basically want to go, um, but that will only last so long, and eventually the current will start running the other way, uh, and then we'd be in trouble. Um, so. Uh, we, we did get a little breeze for a little while, and we have made it about um, two miles uh, from the, the entrance to uh, Orient Harbor. And we're now off uh, Ram Head, a feature of Ram Island, which is uh, a section of uh, Shelter Island. And so, well, that's as far as we've made it. but. Since, you know, I don't really have to pay much attention to, um, <laughs> to the sailing, uh, I took the opportunity to um, do a bunch of cleaning, um, which, you know, needed to happen. Uh, boat was getting a little grubby. So, uh, that's a positive note. Um, well, and speaking of work that's going on, uh, just to uh, uh, punctuate the boredom, um, I'll show you a project that I have going on. Not completed project, it's ongoing. So my boat, which was recycled by General Boats in uh, the winter of 2016, came uh, with an electric lift for the outboard motor. And uh, in the lower right corner of the screen is the rocker switch uh, to make that go up and down. And uh, while I appreciate uh, Stan's ingenuity in engineering uh, this solution to the problem of how to make your outboard motor go up and down, I really didn't care for the electric winch approach. Uh, used electricity, of course. And, well, actually, the other day, um, 
Uh, one of the changes I made when I rewired over the winter is I put a circuit breaker uh, in that circuit and I blew it. <laughs> and not only could I go get the engine up, but actually the engine was up and I couldn't get it down. Um, so it only took me a few minutes to figure out what was going on and change the breaker. But um, And I don't know why it, it um, flipped, but... Uh, inspired me to move uh, this project up on my list, which is to replace the electric winch with, with, with a manual winch, which I will consider an improvement. It's kind of a curious thing, actually, that um, uh, if you read enough of the uh, Rhodes 22 uh, email list archives, uh, you'll come across multiple instances where uh, Stan you know, berates people for... <laughs> Um, cluttering up their boat with unnecessary gear, things like depth finders and, and whatnot, because uh, he expresses the opinion that the boat doesn't need uh, cluttering up with his excess equipment. Uh, yet, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure Stan had a solution that involved ropes and pulleys for lifting the engine before he uh, went to the, the electric winch uh, route and now he, he pushes the electric winches as a s superior um, solution but uh, the rope and pulley thing um, I'm finding works just fine and uh, is simpler and there's less to go wrong um, so I don't understand his uh, <laughs> adherence to it um, well let me show you what what I got set up here so over the years on the uh, Rose 22 email list um, a number of people have undertaken this project and I'm sure there's uh, variations in how they go about it but somebody and unfortunately I forget his name but somebody did it very recently uh, and I thought uh, came up with a uh, well uh, thought out solution and I basically copied him um, so uh, thank you um, <laughs> whoever you are um, so basically what we have here is um, <clears throat> four double blocks um, sized for a uh, 5 16 inch um, line and those are attached to uh, the upper pipe uh, here and the lower pipe um, with off the shelf um, uh, pipe clamps um, from, from Home Depot, galvanized steel. Uh, the fellow who did it said he's had it for four or five years and they hold up fine, so no need to try to um, source fancy stainless steel hardware. And actually, uh, I went to buy one inch um, clamps because uh, this is a one inch pipe here at the top and they didn't have any, and so I bought the three quarter and that's actually worked out, worked out well. I had to kind of uh, reform it into a, a, a more of a C shape from a flat shape, but uh, it seems uh, the better size for it, so three-quarter inch uh, pipe clamp. Now I have two problems uh, here. Um, one is uh, I've got this padlock that, <laughs> uh, that's kind of in the way and it's unfortunately stuck. So there's another project is to uh, figure out a way to get that off and out of the way. Uh, the second problem um, I'll demonstrate. Um, basically, uh, there's not enough room to pull uh, the the mount all the way up. We we run out of space here. The the blocks are right up against each other. So to solve that, uh, I need to um, remove this pipe and mount another one um, or unless I can figure out a way to reuse this one uh, closer to the front of the boat so I get more space between the lower pulleys uh, and the upper pulleys um, so uh, we'll have to figure that out and uh, and I want to add some kind of cleat because I'm, I'm I'm afraid with just this cam cleat uh, that it could pop out too easily and you know drop the motor down to the bottom. Not that anything bad happens, but you don't want to overtax the system.
here's an unusual development. We have wind. <laughs> I wouldn't want you to uh, accuse me of only showing you video of uh, flat, dead, calm seas. So, uh, you know, I think there's five to ten knots, I'm guessing. Uh, and it's, it's from the east, or east, east northeast, uh, which is totally outside the, the forecasted uh, directions. I'm, I'm formulating an opinion that if the uh, theory, if the winds are light, that they have a hard time forecasting the direction. We'll pay attention to that and see if it seems to be true. Um, so now, uh, if this keeps up, we have the prospect of getting to Three Mile Harbor early, but um, I don't think we'll count on it to you know, be good enough to, say, go on to Montauk or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure how far that would be, and I'm not going to even check it. If it's an early day, it's an early day. Um, but it's fun now. It's about quarter after one, and we're a little over a mile from the entrance to Three Mile Harbor. And the wind has died again. It was a good little sail. Um, but, uh, well, there's no way I'm going to sail into the, the long, uh, narrow uh, entrance into Three Mile Harbor uh, in any event. Uh, so I guess I'll just go ahead and start the engine now. And, motor the rest of the way and get in at an early hour and maybe do something useful. I'm not sure. The autopilot doesn't like it when there's no wind. It get con gets confused. All right, off we go. It's now about 20 minutes after 2 when we are anchored in Three Mile Harbor. Uh, I'm sorry about the uh, the leaf blower in the background. There's unfortunately nothing I can do about it. Uh, so let me start by showing you uh, the chart uh, where we went today. So here is Orient Harbor up here on the North Fork of Long Island. And we spent the night up in this end and then made our way out slowly into this uh, channel and pretty much took a straight line from this buoy across to the uh, entrance buoy to Three Miles Harbor which unfortunately is just off the edge of the chart but the blow up of Three Mile Harbor is on this chart. <laughs> so uh, it's got a little narrow channel here and we came all the way down to the south end where it's pretty shallow and hopefully I'm going to find it shallow enough that I can uh, work here. The bottom seems sandy as opposed to muddy so uh, that seems right, and the, the water temperature is almost 80. Whoops, there goes the sun. Sorry about that. So I have a bathing suit, and as I said, the water temperature uh, should be pretty good. And um, uh, besides, I need a bath. So I'm back from the briny deep, a worthwhile little exercise since I can report that uh, my bottom paint seems to be doing uh, an adequate job. There's a little bit of slimy growth on it, nothing that I think would slow the uh, boat down very much, nothing. Uh, more than that, you know, certainly no indication of barnacles or anything like that, like that starting. Uh, and also, I can say that, this is not really a surprise, but I've never verified it before, my uh, depth gauge uh, uh, says the water uh, depth is about a foot lower, 
foot less than what it really is. It was. It told me it was three feet four inches roughly, and when I got in, it was about shoulder height or about uh, four foot four inches, um, more or less. And that's not surprising since the the uh, sensor is probably about a foot below the water level. So, um, but that was good to know. Uh, all right, I'm not sure uh, what else we're going to do today, but it's almost 3 o'clock, so one thing we're going to do is have a beer. So here's another kind of project-related video for you. Uh, in the last video, cruising video, I, I reported that uh, tying the anchor rod off to the bow eye rather than the bow cleat seemed to reduce uh, swinging. So I went ahead and uh, I had a jury-rigged uh, thing I tested that out with and I bought some equipment uh, which is basically a what's called a mooring pendant which is a short piece of rope with a eye uh, with a, a thimble in one end um, and uh, I bought one of those because it was the cheapest way to get a piece of line with with a thimble in it and attach that to the bow eye with a shackle. And what I've done, excuse the uh, jiggling, is I've uh, attached that to the anchor road with a rolling hitch. It's just disappearing there. And then I'm going to let out. And then I'm going to let out the anchor road uh, so that that uh, mooring pendant uh, will take up the load. So there the mooring pendant tied off to the uh, anchor road is taking up the load and the anchor road itself is, uh, is slack. And the theory was uh, that this would uh, greatly reduce a swing in an anchor and for some reason it, the, the test indicated that it would. Uh, but actual uh, results uh, are showing that it doesn't. And by the way, uh, that that road is, is still tied off with the cleat. So if the mooring pendant or gizmo uh, you know slips, we still are you know, attached to the anchor. Um, so the archive suggested an additional uh, step that could be taken to reduce the swinging. So now I've also attached one of my docking lines uh, to the anchor road with a rolling hitch, and the other end runs to the aft cleat. So now I've effectively got a, a bridle that keeps me at an angle to the wind. The wind is coming from about that way, and I'm pointed more over that way. So in the testing yesterday, uh, this did uh, tend to uh, not quite eliminate, but greatly reduce the swinging. Um, so I'll report back on how it's doing today. Two days in a row, it must be good. So I have to admit that uh, it seems that none of my experience experiments uh, in techniques to keep the boat from swinging at anchor have been successful. Uh, don't know what to say. Perhaps more research is required. Uh, I will say that there, there is a, a additional benefits to uh, putting the uh, mooring pendant on the bow eye as kind of a painter, if you will, uh, for the boat. One, it, it, it lowers the attachment point for the anchor road, uh, which has the effect of, of you know, reducing the, uh, the amount of road you need to put out. And it also uh, prevents chafing over the tow rail. Now, my boat doesn't have uh, chocks. Um, at the bow, so chafing there has always been a concern. Um, so uh, 
So I'm not, you know, displeased that I, I took that step. It didn't cost a lot of money. Uh, but it didn't solve the swinging. Oh, well. Uh, anyway, it's uh, getting on in the evening, and it's time to move on towards dinner. So for dinner tonight, we're going back to the frozen casserole approach. Um, the other night, my wife cooked up a casserole with some leftover chicken and some rice and some broccoli. And after we finished dinner and there was some left over, uh, one of us, I don't even recall who, thought that, oh, we could freeze this up as a boat meal. So, um, so that's what happened. So boat meals don't have to be something um, special. Uh, and to add to that, we've got some extra peas just in case there's not enough broccoli in here, I guess. Uh, so the same old technique of um, we'll put this in saucepan and uh, bring that to boil and then let it sit for a little bit. And so there is dinner. Looks pretty good to me. It's Wednesday morning, uh, the last day of the trip, and we are headed home. Uh, and this morning, <laughs> a first for this trip, we are uh, blessed with a decent breeze. Uh, five to ten, I'd say, uh, out of the south. Um, and since we're headed north, uh, we're more or less running, and we've used the whisker pole to... Uh, set us up wing on wing so that's working out well we're doing three knots or so uh, we have no Sun this morning but um, <laughs> I'll take the breeze over the Sun so once again uh, to transition from Gardeners Bay uh, into Long Island Sound we need to negotiate the race uh, slack tide in the race is uh, 9 o'clock this morning and 3 o'clock this afternoon and more or less and uh, initially I thought well I couldn't I couldn't make it uh, for the 9 o'clock slack water so I'd have to go for the 3 o'clock slack water uh, but then I thought about it and <laughs> I got up at 3 in the morning, so, <laughs> and uh, did a little night sail, which I really enjoyed. Uh, so, uh, the, fortunately, the buoys uh, marking the channel in Three Mile Harbor are uh, lighted, uh, or at least uh, half of them are, the, the red ones are. So, I used those to uh, negotiate my way out uh, into Gardener's Bay, and uh, it was fun. Uh, so we are approaching our old friend 1GI, the buoy we use as a waypoint so often. And uh, over here is the, uh, the ruin that's off the north uh, point of Gardener's Island. And once again, I'll show you the chart. Well, we can't see much of the route at the moment. Uh, so this is Three Mile Harbor. Uh, and we're making a course, there's a slight course correction here off Crow Shoal, and then up here to 1GI, and here's the, the ruins right near there. So we'll continue off this way. Uh, after turning on that buoy. Well, it's the same old story. 
Uh, we got uh, past Little Gull Island a little bit and the wind just quit. Uh, and uh, I kind of want to get back in, packed up on my way home. So this time I will start the engine and motor in the last few miles. We got back to Pine Island Marina uh, around 10, so plenty early, lots of left in the day. Uh, but uh, there was no wind out there for the rest of that trip across the Sound, I mean, absolutely nothing. So uh, you know, starting the engine was uh, the right move. So that'll do it for this trip. Um, uh, stay tuned for another, I'm sure, before the summer is over. Uh, hopefully next time we'll have more wind. but. There are no guarantees.